tornado warning here in Cheeseland. He's up in Wisconsin. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to post there and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hey, say start, which I think that'll tweet. I don't know. I'm still getting used to this. So you realize, Matt, you are the, uh, this is the first time I've had someone with me on 15 I'll be the minutes. guinea pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So I think we are uh, streaming. Yep. All of that's on. I got active. Let me um, call up my live stream on YouTube or MeTube and let's see what we got there. So we've got... Excellent connection. Steve Froming is out there. Mr. Froming. F-R-O-E. Hello. And we got oh, Ryan Jackson in the house. Man, Matt. There we go. Woo. <laughs> This is uh, so so, uh, you know, as as everybody's dialing into this, you know, Ryan and crew, they're going to say, OK, we got two people doing a 15 minute tech talk. And I, Matt, I have yet to hit a 15 minutes on one of my tech talks. I'm just saying, but I have faith. <laughs> I think we got it today. You think <laughs> that's uh, that's a little bit. Um, a little uh, positive thinking, that's what I like. All right. So I think I got, so this is, I'm still getting used to this whole setup thing here. So I got you and, and I, and this is how, you know, I don't know. Have you watched one of my uh, 15 minute tech talks, Matt? Um, yeah, I've seen the uh, one you did uh, a couple of days ago on uh, selective coordination. Okay. So you know that what I do is when we get started, I hit the clock, the timer, and we go on and um, I'm just checking my screens out here. And when I hit that timer, it started to start from 15 minutes down, but I, I haven't figured out how to, how to get a reverse timer to have it go up. So <laughs> because I always go over, I just don't know how much time I go over. So that's okay. We're, we've still got two minutes till five o'clock. Um, so, which is a good thing. So you can see my screen, right, Matt? So, you can watch this yep. so you can see you and me uh, and what I'm displaying. So you can at least see the slides if I show any slides. But I think for the most part, it's probably going to be a discussion. So, all right. Um, let me get my my tubers. Looks like we got a uh, knee hot on the line, too. Awesome. We got knee hot in the house. And Brian Rock. Oh my gosh, this is uh we got you realize the big hitters we got. Steve Froming, Ryan Jackson, Brian Rock, and Nihad El Sharif. I mean, welcome everyone to another 15 minute tech talk. <laughs> which we've never I've never hit 15 minutes, but you know what? There is hope because Matt Hussey says we're gonna do it this time. <laughs> All right, so sound looks good. Anybody, please let me know out there in the house on YouTube and on Facebook if the sound is coming through okay, uh, if, if I'm having issues. So I'm going to look on Facebook real quick. All right, so now you can see what we've got on Facebook. Um, I You know, I never know how to tell if there's anybody watching on Facebook, I don't know. I'd look for comments. I'm just going to say, welcome. Please type any questions in the chat. Okay. Matt Hussey, we are probably should get this ball rolling. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. So Gustavo is in the house. Sounds good, he says. Mr. Froming says, I had a discussion with Steve Froming yesterday, or was it yesterday was Sunday, right? He and I are going over. He's got a cool setup. He's got a he's got more monitors than I do. So 
That's saying something, man. That is saying something, man. He's going to be rocking the house. So you know, he's serving Wisconsin cheese land, which is great. Well, Matt, today's discussion is on 80% rated overcurrent protected devices. So I'm going to hit the timer. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's do this. There it is. We've got 15 minutes, 1458, 57. Let's go. So this question <laughs> usually comes up um, whenever we're doing, like if I'm going across the country as we do educational programs and, and talking to people, especially when they've specified a job. And this is when it hits me, my, my table, whenever I get the emails. And I'm not sure about, about you, Matt, but I'll get the email from a contractor or from a design engineer that says, hey, we were just red flagged uh, from an inspector. And he says, or she says that uh, we did our calculations uh, for 100% rated equipment or breakers. And I just, how do I fix this? Do I just buy 100% rated breaker and install it? And they're telling me I can't do that. So, so I think, I think the, the challenge is and what I'm seeing is when we go down one road, don't communicate very well, and we got to try to fix something in the field afterwards. That's what I see. I don't know about you, Matt. Yeah, I see it um, a little bit from the other end too, where, um, you know, there'll be an effort in the design phase of wanting to incorporate, you know, a 100% rated disconnect um, inside the equipment. Uh, and so there's some confusion around how you size the overcurrent protective device for the application. And so then obviously there's, there's significant kind of implications there where, you know, the equipment has to be designed accordingly and things like that. So. Hopefully we can uh, provide a little bit more uh, clarity around, you know, what all is meant by 100% and whatnot. So why would we go to 100% rated solutions? What's what's that? You know, what's the driving factor? You have, you have any thoughts on that, Matt? Uh, my, my understanding has always kind of led to uh, a further reduction in the cable size from the the, the load uh, going out to the load. Um, once I understood, it took me a while to get it, but once I understood how, you know, conductors and circuit protective devices are designed and how you size it, it gave me a lot of clarity and insight as to what's going on. I'm a mechanical guy myself, so once I started to see the real root of it is it's this challenge of managing this buildup of heat and managing the temperature. Uh, with certain size conductors and whatnot in play. Yeah. So, so whenever, when, when you think about, and I, I had this discussion on series ratings. So I did a series ratings uh, uh, tech talk. And when you go down the series ratings road or you go down the hundred percent rated road, you're typically, I'm going to say typically, because I think there's some misunderstandings, but if you're following the rules, and you understand the application, which we're going to talk a little bit about, you're doing that to save money, right? Because you, like, to your point, you want to use smaller uh, conductors to carry more, basically more of the, you're using more of the percentage of the conductor than, uh, than you would have in, 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 uh, in, in an 80% rated, because you have a 100% versus an 80% rated. And it, in my opinion, when I try to help people understand the differences here, I start them down the road of understanding how we do load calculations. Because yep. a lot of people just, and what I've heard is people think that, well, all circuit breakers and, and fuses, they can only, if, if, you bought a, if you bought a 100 amp breaker, it trips at 80%, right? It trips at 80 amps and not 100 amps. And, and they lose sight of the fact because, because what happens is they, they pick the, they they go straight to the overcurrent device and say, well, I'm going to buy a, yep. I'm going to buy a hundred amp breaker, but I can only put 80 amps through it, which isn't true. Right. So, right. Yep. so, so it, I, whenever I, I take somebody through the journey of understanding why they're going down the hundred percent routed road, I take them through the journey of calculating the load currents and say, well, how do we do our, our load calculations to determine, you do your load calculation, determine this, the load you need to serve. Then you pick a conductor that has the ampacity 
to carry that load current. And then you pick the overcurrent protective device to protect the conductor. We don't reverse engineer that and start with the breaker and work our way down to the load. So when we add that 125% on the continuous loads, that's when you're making the decision to use an 80% rated solution or a 100% rated solution, right? Yep. Yep. So so if you if you decide not to use the 125%, if you decide and I believe it's 210 dot in the amp conductor minimum ampacity, I think it's is it 210.19 if I'm not mistaken, um, where we we we're, we're establishing it's 210.20 your continuous and non-continuous loads. So whenever you are sizing, doing your load calculation to size a branch circuit or a feeder or any of these conductors, you're calculating the load current, either non-continuous plus 100% of the continuous or non-continuous plus 1.25 times the continuous. Yep. If you put the 1.25 in, you're at an 80% rated solution. If you take the 1.25 out and use 100%, now you've got to make sure that your overcurrent protected devices are rated for 100% and the equipment that they're in are rated for 100%, right? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think that perspective gains a lot of clarity once you approach it from looking at the load that you're working with and working your way back into the equipment. Yeah, and that's how that, and that's what you know helped me when when you're talking to different when I'm talking to people trying to trying to trying to help them understand the concept of an eighty percent rated solution versus a hundred percent rated solution. I used to talk to it, speak to this topic, starting with the circuit breaker and and helping people understand how we test the circuit breaker and all that other good stuff. Yeah, but I sort of changed that, and I said. I've got to go back and, and help people understand that if you don't have any continuous loads, so I, let's say that I have 100 amps of non-continuous loads, period. Mm -hmm. I can use a 100 amp breaker for that load, right? Yep. I, don't, I can use the, the conductor rated at that load. I can use the breaker rated at that load. I'm not worried about uh, using any, any concept of an 80% rated solution. I'm using because I don't have any continuous loads. The moment I throw continuous loads into the picture, now I'm adding the 1.25, which causes me to put a larger conductor, right, Matt? A larger yep. conductor, because if let's say I, if I have 100 amps of load and it's all continuous, I'm going to, I'm going to have to pick a conductor that is, uh, that that can carry 125 amps, and not yep. 100 amps. And that conductor is going to be larger than obviously 100 amps worth of conductor. Yep. What does that do for your overcurrent protective device, Matt? It no. also adds, if you go back into how those overcurrent protective devices are tested, it actually aligns with. You know, when they get a, a certain uh, impacity rating, it, it also backs up and supports how they're done. So what's, what you really have going on is a, is a heat mass equation kind of going on where uh, that disconnect is expecting a certain amount of cabling to be present downstream of that disconnect. And so if you decrease the amount there, it's allowing for more to, to build up around that overcurrent protective device. Right. So, so the larger conductor, so a circuit breaker is tested per UL 489 mm -hmm. to its current. So if it's a hundred amp breaker, it's tested for a hundred amps, but the conductor size is based upon the, the 80%, right? Yep. So my conductor size, based on 80%, it's going to be a larger conductor for that 100 amp load of continuous current. When I go down the road of saying I'm going to go for 100% rated uh, equipment or a circuit breaker, I'm using a smaller conductor, and it's all about heat. You, I, you and I had this discussion earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked you to join this, because 
you, you, <laughs> you, you, you know, you were pointing out a lot of great points and, 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 and things like that. So I don't think I could have done it as justice is because you, you, whoop, you seemed a lot very passionate about it. So it's like, Hey, yeah, you're right. It's, it's the, it's the amount of copper that I'm putting on the lugs of that overcurrent protective device, which doesn't match what's the standard, what's in the standard UL 49, which means that I'm relying on that load conductor to take out some of the heat from the circuit breaker, right? Yeah, you, you don't want that uh, circuit breaker to exceed a temperature rise or get into a situation such as thermal runaway where you get nuisance operation and things like that. So, you know, all that's meant to kind of keep things in balance. The moment something changes off that, we have to correct off of it. Yeah, and if you look at, at the UL489 tells us that a 100% rated circuit breaker has to be marked as 100% uh, at, at 100% of its rated current to be tested as described with the smallest enclosure and or in open air, right? And the temperature, because we're always worried about temperature rise. And, and Matt, it's not necessarily... It's not the temperature rise in the enclosure that we're really worried about, right? It's the temperature rise on the lugs and in certain on pieces of equipment, right? Yeah, usually temperature rise is kind of focused around not exceeding a threshold above ambient so that either one, the device fails to perform its intended function or, or two, that it gets so hot that you start damaging other components or cheaply uh, conductor insulation. So typically you might see in like bus bars or things like that, you'll see, you know, we design around equipment around a 40 degree C ambient limit and temperature rise may be around a 65 degree C for reference. Um, that added together creates a 105 degree C, which often mirrors the temperature rating of uh, cabling or insulation on the cable. So usually all these temperature limits are, are meant to keep things from deteriorating that might create an arcing fault or something like that uh, to also making sure the device uh, performs as, it, as it's intended as well. Okay, so, so we're worried about the temperature on certain parts of the, in, the assembly, right? So if it's a circuit breaker in an enclosure, I got to worry about the lugs, I got to worry about uh, maybe, some, maybe the bus that's inside the enclosure, things like that. And I'm relying mm -hmm. on that conductor size for pulling some of that heat out, the copper that's in that conductor, right? To, to bring that, to help with that heat rise. And when I go with a 100% rated piece of uh, uh, installation, so I've taken my load calculation, I've used, I've not used the 1.25, I've calculated 100% times the continuous, 100% times the non-continuous. I've picked my, my conductor size based on that, which is gonna be smaller. And now I'm gonna land that on my on my circuit breaker or or my fusible switch or whatnot that assembly with the breaker needs to be labeled but also the equipment that it's in because if i look at ul 489 it talks about uh talks about the size of the enclosure right it yep. also talks about that the uh, a circuit breaker shall be connected with copper bus bars so i can't have a, an assembly like a panel board that has an aluminum bus, if it's going to be 100% rated, it's definitely going to be a copper bus. And it talks about, um, in some of the cases, I might, I might have a panel board that has a specific density of copper as a bus because I've got to pull that heat out that I'm not getting from the conductors that are on the load terminals of the breaker. Yeah, and you, you can see what they're trying to describe there is ensuring that a, a certain amount of cross-sectional area is present in order to handle that adjustment to, you know, again, balance out the equation of certain amount of copper to uh, handle the amount of temperature buildup. Right. Right. So, and, and, and all of this, so this is, this is what it gets into the mix because, because now we're starting to understand that it's not just the circuit breaker that's got to be labeled 100% rating, and I'm using that circuit breaker. Together, between the circuit breaker and the enclosure of the assembly, whether it be a panel board or whatnot, 
uh, I would, I'm, I have to make sure that they both work together. So if I am out in the field and I, I, I bought an, I, I, I did not include the details on my drawings when they sent them to, to the, uh, uh, to the manufacturer for quoting the, the job, I'm going to quote an 80% rated piece of equipment unless something in the specification says it's hundred percent rated. If it's hundred percent rated, now I'm going to pick certain panel boards or certain circuit breakers. But if I shipped 80% and then you get it in the field, you have an 80% rated solution. I just don't change the circuit breaker. I have to, I may have to also change the panel board or the enclosure that it's in. Yep. Um, so then this gets into the different size and frame ratings and things of that nature and how it's supposed to be labeled. Um, there's, uh, there's some definitions in the UL white book that talks about, uh, the current rating of a panel board is the maximum continuous current that can be supplied through the main terminals, unless they're marked for use at hundred percent of their current rating. Uh, it's, it's at an 80% when they are hundred percent rated, they tell you exactly how it's the equipment and the overcurrent protected devices are, uh, are supposed to be labeled and they're supposed to indicate that they are hundred percent rated. Now. Matt, I went through some of our catalogs and I got this one out of our breaker. So what was interesting is you'll notice that some of these, the, the one note in here says uh, 100% rated is note three, not every circuit breaker. So the CKD has a note three. That means you could buy that in 100% rating. The HKD is not. The CHKD is. The KDC is not. That is uh, its current limiting. So not all circuit breakers are rated for 100%. So I may not be able to get a specific uh, uh, frame or a specific type of breaker if that's what it called out for for other reasons, right? This right. is from our panel board solution. It talks about a 100% um, rated circuit breaker requires copper bus. And we saw that in the standard, right? Because that's how we test 100% rated. And it's not available in a 12, 4, and a 4X enclosure. So in some cases, your panel boards, you've got you've to look and see what steel, I say this word, what steel can I wrap around that overcurrent device? Uh, you know, can it be a, a specific, is it a specific panel board? Now, you, you, you manage uh, motor control centers. Do you mm -hmm. have special 100% rated motor control centers or are they all 100% rated? How do you handle that? Yeah, you'll you'll see some you know specific differences within those uh, constructions. Um, typically, we we rely on passive cooling, so you might see a increase in um, space or maybe additional ventilation. Um, you know, really as an effort to again balance out the equation where where the the load that we're feeding is going to have a decrease in the cabling size. So now we have a, a more concentrated. Uh, Piece of that temperature uh, within the compartment, and so you'll you'll find that there's specialized designs, and that's usually what causes some of those uh, restrictions that you see around, uh, you know, NEMA classifications. You know, typically mm -hmm. if they're relying on passive uh, cooling, um, you're going to miss out on an ability to have, uh, you know, NEMA 12 designs or, or things like that. Usually you know, subsequent limitations come into play with the choice of a 100% rated uh, uh, application. Okay, and now we have an application note, which I'm showing down below here, um, where we've got a couple of materials, a couple of things that I use whenever I try to help people understand this concept. This is a good application note, which goes over the details. It talks about, you know, the, the reasons why we're, we're reducing, and, and, and we, we said this right when we started, the reason we're going to go to 100% rated equipment is because I'm using smaller conductors to get the job done, which is going to could save me money. But as I said during my discussion in uh, for series ratings, whenever you start saving, whenever you start cutting the corners to try to save money, you better cross your T's and dot your I's. It's not just as simple as specifying 100% rated circuit breaker. It's the equipment that's inside and in series ratings. Uh, you have to think about motor contribution and other things. So. Um, just looking, you've got some strange Celsius to Fahrenheit equivalencies on your slide. 60 degrees Celsius isn't 108, nor is 50. Yeah, that was, I'm not sure where, Ryan, where you saw those uh, temperatures. Those were out of, oh, let me just take a look at my slide deck here real quick. 
Um, but the all of the temperatures I thought were taken straight from the standard, like this guy here. Um, 60 degrees C, 108. So what did uh, Ryan say? I just want to make sure I cover his stuff. Uh, 60 degree isn't 108. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's right out of UL 489. It exceeds 60 degrees C, 108 degree Fahrenheit. I don't know. I'd have to do the, the conversions. And he said 50 is not 90. So, and that is, that is taken straight out of the standard. Um, Brian Rock. Yeah, it looks like they're planning off. It looks like that should be for an ambient factored in there. Yeah, I think what I think what uh, Ryan is saying, sixty degrees Celsius doesn't convert into one hundred eight degrees Fahrenheit. Correct. So, uh, let's see, temperature rising and past the ambient temperatures, conductors, insulation, temperature rating. Yeah, Tom or Matt, are there inherently any differences, eighty percent versus one hundred percent, when dealing with thermal magnetic circuit breakers versus hydraulic magnetic breakers? Jeez, um, you know what I would say. Brian, um, the, remember the it's all about it's all about the heat and the rise on certain terminations. I don't know that it's I, I'm not sure of the specific how to answer your I'm not as familiar with hydraulic magnetic breakers, um, but I can say you know I, I don't know how to answer that question, but I can say that we change the the lugs, we change a lot of other things. It's not just about what's inside the circuit breaker that counts. Um, I'm not well, sure. and also too the uh, the circuit breaker would need to be calibrated to uh, have its time current curve dependent upon that type of uh, application as well. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not sure you would see very much you know from difference on a thermal magnetic for a hydraulic magnetic. It would just they would seem similarly change to adapt to that application. Yeah, that's I would true. Think. Yeah, you're you're yeah, you're probably right there. Uh, so so let me just uh, let me go back to what I was going to show. Um, so we got I I put some links to a couple application notes down in the uh, in the description of this out on uh, YouTube and it's on my YouTube site. So on Facebook, all I did was post the link. Actually, I'm I'm streaming live to Facebook, so I'll have to put those links out there too because I'm sort of streaming to both. Uh, locations but this document here really helps goes over exactly what we just said talks about the the uh, 100 percent rated doing the load calculations um, talks about the the, the non-continuous load plus 125 percent and the fact that if i don't have any continuous loads then i'm using my breaker to serve the load 100 amps is 100 amps uh, it's only when yep. i have continuous loads i got to worry about that and is that that's because of the heat right uh, right you know, I'm, I'm Matt. I'm not giving it time to cool down, uh, shutting loads on and off. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So, and 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 the main message here is make sure that the uh, that the equipment is rated correctly. Now, this is our molded case circuit breaker. Talks about uh, our new PD, our our new uh, uh, power defense circuit breakers, and that we have 100% UL rated options uh, with electronic trip units and. And, and again, we, no matter what manufacturer it is, not all of their circuit breakers are going to be able to be used in 100% rated applications. Uh, and in this case here, uh, this is, again, 100% rated uh, devices. And I was going to try to show um, like a panel boards. Here we go. What's this one? Difference between 100% rated uh, breakers and 100% rated assemblies. Normally, an assembly is listed for 100% operation only. You know what? Why don't you describe this? Because we had a discussion this morning, and I think <laughs> it's it, that that offer you you offer a unique perspective that a lot of people may not understand with regard to. A lot of people may misunderstand that they think that just because they put that breaker into a panel board, now I can only use it at 80%. Yeah, I. I had the benefit of being able to participate in uh, design for circuit breakers as well as design and assemblies. And so, you know, when you start seeing all this kind of tossed around, you know, the idea is that 
you know, sometimes the perception that, you know, when a, a device is placed within an enclosure, there's a derating factor that needs to be considered. And, you know, it started to occur to me as I'm looking through all these different test setups that the enclosures encompass is that, you know, when, when a, something such as a, a panel board or an MCC has to do a temperaturized test, often what you'll find is that the requirement is that we run the device at its rated current. And so I, it kind of took me back. It was like, well, wait a minute. I thought there was supposed to be this sort of restriction. And really, that's when it allowed me to kind of see that, oh, you know, we're, we're testing these devices to their full capability. And really what's occurring is, you know, the application of the conductors outside of the equipment that is causing these sort of system changes to, to be considered. And, uh, you know, so, you know, what you'll find is, you know, if a, a drive or uh, a circuit breaker is applied in, in an equipment, say it's a 100 amp uh, device, you know, that device is run at full operating capability. And that's to ensure that, you know, we're not going to cause any sort of nuisance operation once it's installed in the equipment. Um, and then it's really a reflection of, you know, how we change that balance equation uh, to meet, you know, specific applications such as, you know, reducing the conductors downstream of it. Right. And, and, and so I, you're really like you, your point was very well taken that when I, I test that breaker with a specific size conductor on it, which has a, mm -hmm. has amount of copper, the moment I start reducing that copper on that load terminal, I got to make up for it somewhere else. Yep, it's a, it's a heat sink, and and that to me was the the aha moment. If we start looking at it as a sum of a certain amount of of copper or uh, current carrying devices in series, all of a sudden you start realizing it's a it's this balancing act that we're trying to make sure. And so for me, it was always easier to start thinking of it like that because then you would start seeing this kind of balance. You know, any of the correction factors that we do for other things are really just simple adjustments to that same fundamental equation. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then when you think about like a like uh, we'll, we'll in in three ten we'll say well you can use a ninety degree C insulation uh, insulated yeah. conductor but you can't use the ninety degree C column uh, for the ampacity because what that would do is put you into a smaller conductor because I can yep. I can use more current right through that conductor so I yep. got to make sure like we're rated for seventy five degree C. Uh, we're rated at 80%. So you, you've got the 1.25 you got to think about because the 1.25 will reduce the amount of, uh, of or increase the amount of copper. And if I don't do that, I reduce the amount. 75 versus 90, same thing. When I go to a 90 degree C column, I'm going to use a smaller conductor because I'm going to put more current through it at the 90 degree C rating. So the, the temperature rating of the conductor that I'm ampacity i can use 90 degree c insulation but i got to use a 75 degree c column because that's going to make me pick the right conductor for the application which is going to be thick enough to act for that heat sink that we need when we test that assembly for heat rise yep yep it goes back to you know when those devices were originally tested and the rated current they were all calibrated and dependent upon a certain conductor size downstream of it so as those things change, we've got to be able to accommodate those changes. All right. All right. So we turned this 15 minute tech talk into a 30 minute tech talk, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't know about anybody else. Let's see. So I see, I see, I got the, the brains going at it, Brian and Ryan and, uh, and crew. So, um, They've had a good discussion out there. I, I haven't checked uh, Facebook before we sign off on this 15-minute uh, gone rogue, 30-minute tech talk. I still can't figure out how to fit. Oh, wait, here we go. There we go. I see I see a comment. Um, what is this? No, that's different. That's not a comment. That's uh, – <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um so I don't see, okay, so I still can't, I can't figure out how to tell how many people we've got on Facebook or not, but I don't know. But anyway, 
All right, so I think we're golden on um, on eighty percent versus a hundred percent. I think. Anybody have any other questions out there on YouTube land? Anything you think we forgot, Matt? I can't think of it. Yeah, me neither. Remember, if you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit the thumbs up if you like this stuff. If it's hitting what you're what you're what you're asking for. If you have ideas on other areas of discussion, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell. If you hit the bell, did you know this, Matt? When you're on YouTube, you have to, if you if you find this, a channel that you like, you like it, and then you hit a bell, and then it'll notify you when they are, that person is either posted new material or has gone live. I didn't know that. I found that out. Yep. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Ryan and uh, Brian Rock and uh, Nihad El Sharif and who else? Oh, my buddy Steve Froming and everybody else out there. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. I am going to, without any other questions, I'm going to shut the stream down. You can hang on, Matt. I'm just going to end my streams and thank everybody for joining us. And remember, stay safe and healthy and practice social distancing network. In fact, the technical social distancing network. I love that. I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to patent that name. All right, guys, I'm, I'm going to shut the stream down. Thanks for joining us. Take care. God bless and all that good stuff. All right. So the YouTube stream is shut down.